What's up legends and welcome back to another video. It's a Friday video, so it is a video where we're gonna be looking over a specific car, just giving you a quick, simple tour and then driving it. Today's video, we are gonna be talking about this, the Porsche Cayman GT4, the first generation of GT4. It's been a while since I've done a video on one of these. The first time I experienced one of these, it was actually Shmi 150s, the blue one from back in the day. A lot of you will probably remember that car. This is a friend of mine's car, his name is Elliot. His Instagram is going to be above here. A fantastic tennis player. Uh, but he's also a massive Petra head. So he also has an Instagram, Cars Collection 06, which is for his cars. He's got this and uh, another Porsche as well, which we'll hopefully be filming. But it is a lovely, lovely looking car and looks on everything. The way this thing drives is what made it so world renowned. Uh, this one is in a really nice spec. So it's gray, dark gray exterior, similar to the Grigio Silverstone I've got on the Scuderia, but it's got the matte black rims. These are classic GT4 kind of GT rims. So also on the GT3 RSs, um, they are very similar. And this one actually has the really rather rare carbon ceramic brakes. So Elliot does a bunch of track um, with this car. So those are essential when you're on the track. Huge brake calipers round front and back right here. Um, looks awesome with the yellow accent as well. Yellow and gray is just a combination that goes together so nicely. So based on the Cayman, obviously, uh, they've changed a lot. So you've got, for example, like suspension from the GT3 and you've got the engine out of the 991. Oh, sorry, we've got a scooter driving past. The engine out of the 991.1 Carrera S, which originally had 400 horsepower and they've taken 15 off so that this didn't outrun that too much. Uh, so we're down to 385 horsepower, which is plenty because it's obviously a much smaller chassis and completely different layout. Now they've made this front splitter a bunch more beefy than it originally was on the Caymans. This car is a completely different layout to the traditional 911, so the engine is actually uh, placed in the middle of the car. But what's kind of cool, if I grab the key, I think the key must be in my pocket, where is it? Here it is, is you have two boots. So you've got one boot around front, like a 911 or any traditional mid-engine car. I don't know what we're gonna have in here. I think we've got a few bags. There we go. So you've got one, it's actually exactly the same boot as in a 911. So really good size. And then, if you've run out of space there, you also have a second boot right here, which you can lift up, boom, and you've got a second boot, which is a good size as well. So it's actually a really practical, convenient car. You just need to slam this down a bit. There we go. Now you've got the black writing on this one, Cayman GT4 and the black exhaust tips. Central exhaust tips like on all GT products from Porsche, apart from GT2 RS. A new diffuser. The wheels actually are really nicely aligned and, and don't, you know, they're not too far in. They stick out a little bit, which is lovely. These air vents with the GT4 logo. Overall, really, really good looking car. Now the main big difference on the exterior is this huge wing. Now this car's actually since been replaced with the new Cayman GT4, which hopefully we'll be doing a video on uh, very soon. We've actually got an interesting story with that car. Um, but this is the one that kind of made this basis so special. When the guys from GT, you know, the GT um, kind of section of Porsche got their hands on the Cayman, it was bound to be pretty magical. Now the interior of this one is absolutely lovely. So we've got black leather and Alcantara with gray stitching. So light gray stitching and full carbon fiber over it. Basically, it's specced out to the max, this car. Um, so Alcantara on the doors here. You've got the, the sound system, uh, standard sound system. Leather, Alcantara, and carbon all around. One really cool trick in Porsches is that the cup holders are actually hidden here and you can have them surrounded in your carbon fiber. Um, now, it's also got this one. There were three options, uh, I believe, of seats in these. So you had the traditional Porsche sports seats, then you had some bucket seats, and then you got these, which are the 918 seats. Literally exactly the same as the 918. You can't adjust the angle, but you can just move them back and forth. And they look awesome and they hold you in. I mean, look kind of tight there. They hold you in so nicely. Carbon fiber, you know, carbon fiber around the back there. They are absolutely epic. Now this one's also got uh, the club sport pack. So it's got a roll cage behind the seat, hold it together quite nicely. And of course, this car was only available with a six-speed manual gearbox, short throw gearbox, which we'll talk about when we're driving, but looks pretty epic. Alcantara steering wheel 
and th you know three circles there you go your speedometer your rev counter and a little screen for info which is what makes this instantly recognizable as well to the five that you would have traditionally on a 911 now you've got the sport chrono watch timer stopwatch here which again on the 911 would be back there uh, all of this is straight out of a 911 effectively but yeah really nice now it's obviously a, a strict two-seater unlike a 911 which you have the two seats behind but i'm so excited because i love these things so let's hop in and let's go for a drive <laughs> right we're in the cayman um we're driving obviously around monaco we're at a traffic light right now which is one of the world's longest traffic lights but your first impression when you hop into this is how good the visibility is around you honestly like you got these like any porsche you got these big windows here the visibility around back even with a wing you don't notice it that much. I mean, you know it's there, so you've kind of got that cool aspect of knowing that you've got a wing right there, but it's not kind of intruding your vision too, too much. Um, with the side windows, you see those side air vents. And then you get in, the clutch is really predictable, really easy to manage. Um, the steering is heavy without being overly heavy. Um, and not too light either, so there's still a, a decent amount of feeling through it. Um, they really kind of found that balance right. And Porsche, I think, are potentially the best at walking that fine line of making a car usable on the road and almost on a daily basis, because you could almost daily one of these, whilst not sacrificing too much of the feeling you get on track. It's a really fine line to walk, and I, and I honestly think that Porsche potentially do it the best. And this is a perfect example of that. This gearbox is fantastic. I mean, there are so many good things about this car. The, the engine is incredibly linear and matches the character of this car and goes so well with the chassis. The brakes are fantastic. These carbon ceramics don't take too long to warm up like old school carbon ceramics on, on my R8 or, or, or more even on the Scud. There's a lot of feeling through the brake pedal and they're incredibly powerful because they're taken straight from the GT3 and put on a smaller, lighter car. So you've got ample power through the brake pedal. But the thing which for me makes this stand out so much is this gearbox, this short throw gearbox, which is so communicative even just whilst changing gear you feel so connected to the car but they've also added this kind of mother load cheat code through an auto blip system the car effectively does heel and toe for you now you can switch that on or off because a lot of people say you know it is a bit too much of a cheat chassis and that mid-engine aspect into the hands of Porsche first of all so the build quality is there everything is fantastic and then letting the GT section kind of go nuts on it is just one of the greatest things that's happened and they've really really nailed it um, with uh, with this car so for me one of the best that's come out in the, in the past 10 years I haven't experienced a new one yet but the sound this thing makes obviously it's not Porsche's fault it's not the GT uh, sections fault it's just the way the regulations are today you can't have cars that sound like this anymore but that adds so much character and it being the first of many to come you know there are rumors there'll be a gt4 rs so many different rumors makes it extra special so i think th these things are so cool and they really do sound great there aren't too many exhaust aftermarket exhaust options for these um, I mean, obviously there's quite a few, but not as much as you get for like a 911 or something. But I don't think you necessarily need to change the, the exhaust on these. They sound so great. Now, the 
chassis is so complete. There is no roll when going around the corners with one of these. And the feeling through the steering is just unreal. Honestly, they've nailed it because it's so communicative. You know exactly what's happening through the steering wheel. Um, you get just the right amount of feel. But as I said, it doesn't kind of take a toll on the daily drivability of this thing. It's also a great platform because it isn't too big. You can drive it around town fairly easily. And when you get on these small kind of alpine roads, it's not so big like, you know, Lambos can be, some Ferraris can be. You know, if you're driving an 812 around, it's pretty tricky to kind of drive that around some of these small roads. Because this, you can chuck around and on track, I imagine it's the same thing. And it's just such a complete package. And they've held their value really well, and I'm not surprised. So Porsche didn't really know how successful the GT4 would be at first when they first came out with it. So they didn't make huge numbers. I mean, they made quite a few, but not huge numbers of them. Whereas now with the new generation, apparently they're going to be a lot more produced. So this first gen is always going to remain special, and that's why they've held their value quite well. I mean, these are still in euros, around 100,000. suspension of a GT3, the brakes from a GT3, the engine from a Carrera S, and everything put together, God, you forget how good these are. And I remember Tim Schmee telling me that this was potentially one of the most complete cars he'd ever driven, and how in love he was with the GT4. And you know, he's got a lot of cars, so for someone like that to talk so highly about this, says a lot. The front end grip is fantastic. attract too much attention, attracts the right amount of attention. I really got to think Porsche and G the GT products are just something else. I mean, when was the last time you heard someone kind of talk really badly about any GT product? No one really does because no one really can. Because they're so good. You know, GTSs, GT3s, GT2s, um, GT4s now, they're all so good and that balance they've managed to find is spot on. Wow, what a car. Elliot, thank you for letting me drive, because this is something really special. And I, it actually has a, a real sweet spot for me, because the first ever French video I made on my French channel was with a Boxer Spider, which is effectively a convertible version of this car. Uh, and I spent, what, like a week or two weeks with it um, in LA, and completely fell in love with it. It is so cool. It is so cool. I look forward to seeing what they're going to do next with this platform, whether it will be GT4 RS, whether that will be manual. Um, and I would love to drive the new car, but every time I get into one of these, I actually kind of regret no, not getting one. <laughs> I really, really do. This is so, so cool. Uh, anyways, that's that. As you can tell, really like this car. If you have a car and you're around the south of France or anywhere and you would like us to do a Friday video on one of these, Please do get in touch. Um, I love these kind of simple, just trying out um, different models and comparing the different feelings that these cars give you. Um, it's a pleasure every time. So thanks for following, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you one day get the chance to drive this or any other Porsche GT product, please, please grasp it because they're just unbelievable and they deserve all the credit that they get. So. Elliot, thank you guys. Follow him if you're fans of tennis. Fantastic player, who I'm sure you'll be hearing about a lot in the future. And if you also like Porsches and these kinds of cars, he's got a lot of experience and he posts a bunch about those on his car channel on Instagram. So, guys, please make sure to follow him and I'll be seeing you again very, very soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.